So 11.3 continues to expand our knowledge of how the water system and water in general works. Um, underground water is an important step that we need to understand because it is where we get all of the water, or most of the water at least, for drinking as well as irrigation and farming and all of that. So this is a really important step in that cycle and without it we would be lost. Um, so groundwater is just water located within the rocks below the Earth's surface. So that just means water that is underground, as groundwater implies. Um, so location of groundwater, water is going to seep underground and pass through a zone of aeration and then into the zone of saturation. So those are two fancy science words, but essentially what we're talking about is that water infiltrates, a word from 11.2, or water soaks through the ground down into a naturally made storage tank. So zone of aeration, which is this one here, is the upper zone above the water table, where the soil is not completely full of water, but it's where the water is draining through. Then the water hits the water table, which is the boundary zone between aeration and saturation. And saturation is the lower zone of soil that is completely saturated, another word for full of water. So we're going to look at some uh, pictures down here to help with that. <clears throat> so down, hold on, where is the, there we go. As water, and water is red in this image here, as water goes downwards, it's going to seep or soak through the grass here, then through the dirt, and in this area here, this area is starting to get quite soggy and quite wet. However, you're not going to hit standing water yet until you get to this line. Below here, this is where the soil is completely saturated, meaning that soil cannot hold any more water. It is completely full of water. So if you've ever been at the beach and you're digging a hole and digging and digging and digging, and one, two, three feet down, you finally hit an area where for every scoop of sand you take out, it just seeps full of water. And you try to scoop out some more sand and seeps in with more water, you've now hit the saturated zone. You've hit the water table. Where any deeper that you go, it's not even really, you can't really just say that you're um, scooping out sand anymore because it's as much water as it is sand. That sand cannot hold any more water than the water that's in there. You would have just hit the water table and the saturated zone. Of course, the water table is not an actual table of water, uh, but it is a layer or it is a line that can generally be drawn that describes the difference between the unsaturated and the saturated zone. Um, dis it describes where you're going to find soil and dirt that has water in it, but um, soil and dirt that's not completely full of water. It's wet, it's soggy, but it's not soaking. You go any lower than that, and you're going to find totally soaked soil and dirt, or potentially just open water. Um, we'll come back to these images in a minute. So that's the zone of aeration and the uh, zone of saturation. So that describes how the water gets down to these aquifers, but an aquifer is a rock layer that stores lots of water. Let's keep it really simple. Um, it's essentially a man, or not a man-made, a naturally made water tank made of stone. Um, so if we look down in this picture, water would seep down into here, and it's gonna hit this impermeable, meaning a layer of dirt or sand or rock that for whatever reason cannot be passed through. No one shall pass. Um, be passed. How can I, why am I not able to spell right now? Passed through, right? So that impermeable layer, layer does not let any water out of it. So right here, you're going to have water that is stored on top of this aquifer, right? Because if it's on top of this impermeable layer, you're going to have water here and you can drill into it and get a well, right? Um, if you bore through that impermeable layer, which is this whole layer here, right? Whoops, right? If you bore through all of this stuff here, then you are going to be in the actual aquifer. So see how we've got a section of rock or impermeable layer here and a section of rock here. 
This is right here the aquifer, right? Which you can see right here. So I'm going to erase some of these squiggles. So there's two types of aquifers. We don't need to get confused by that or spend too much time talking about it. But there's an unconfined aquifer and a confined aquifer. An unconfined aquifer just means that you can get into it without having to drill through this impermeable layer. It is essentially stored on top of that rock or really hard surface. Um, a confined aquifer is one that is sandwiched between two impermeable layers. Impermeable layer number one, impermeable layer number two. And so it's essentially sandwiched between two layers of rock or impermeable soil and it is a full storage tank that's held down there. If there's water or aquifer that's just stored in the soil and underground but isn't capped, it's not held in by two layers of rock, one on top and one on the bottom, we call that an unconfined aquifer. So aquifers are super important because that's where we get almost all of our water for drinking and for farming. So a recharge zone is the ground surface where water enters an aquifer. So this whole area would be the recharge zone. So what's important about that is that we leave it as a natural uh, surface. If we pave over it or make it buildings or um, concrete of any kind or pavement of any kind, we're going to divert that water. If that water, instead of going down here and down here and down here and over here so we can get into the confined aquifer, then we are not going to be recharging that aquifer. So think of it like your cell phone. If you were not allowed to charge your cell phone for three days, you would not be talking to anybody, right? So we want these things to be able to recharge. So the more that we pave over it, right, and we stop that water from going through and instead we divert it somewhere else, means that we are not going to continue having those aquifers to be able to drink from or to be able to use for farming and irrigation. So. I pose a question here. Think about the US. How much of our ground surface has been paved and or built on? We have even built drainage systems that divert the fresh water out to the oceans, salt water. So that means that we are not allowing these aquifers to recharge. This is a process that takes thousands and thousands of years to recharge because you're talking about tiny little bits of water dripping down through these layers. And as that happens, this aquifer slowly, slowly, slowly builds up. But an aquifer that takes thousands and thousands of years to build up can be drained much quicker than that. If a million people live in an area, which wouldn't be crazy, a million people live in Boston, if a million people live in an area and start to use that water for drinking water, to fill up their pools, to water their lawns, to water crops, that aquifer is gonna drain pretty quickly, which can lead to some serious problems. So one way that we drain those, and I'm not saying we shouldn't drain them, right? We need our water both for irrigation and for drinking. But one way that we drain them is we do it with either springs or wells, as well as artesian springs. The difference between these is not really that important. Essentially, a spring is just where water flows out because the water table meets the surface. An artesian spring is a crack in this impermeable layer here. So if this layer just somehow for whatever reason it's solid and then it goes crack and breaks right there then an artesian well is going to form where this water due to the pressure can just kind of flow up to the top if there is no break in that cap we have to actually drill through it right we can either go down into the water table this is an un unconfined aquifer or if we really wanted to we could drill down and bore through that impermeable rock layer and get down into the confined aquifer. So well, you can think of as human made. A spring or an artesian spring are just naturally, naturally formed wells where the water flows out on its own, essentially. So this one and this one are natural and this one is human made, okay? So I like this picture a lot. This picture is another good one. Um, it shows again an artesian well. So a clay is not very porous, meaning it, it packs down very tight and water has a tough time getting through it. So water is going to form, or that clay is going to form that impermeable barrier right here that's going to hold all this water in here. If you get a little break in that line, right, so it's here and then, and then it starts up again, 
you're going to have here an artesian well or an artesian spring where water could just flow up naturally. Um, so as we see here, here's the runoff, right? And it would be a little bit more natural if there was like a small tributary and another small tributary and a tribu something leading in there and something leading in there and it comes over here, right? It's never just so pretty that there's just one of them. You're going to have tons of little streams and lakes and you're also just going to have little tiny bits of water flowing all over the place, right? That you can't even really see. And it's going to then come into this lake. So as we think about all these issues, we obviously, we need water, right? We need water to drink, we need water to farm, we need lots of water. And nobody's saying that we shouldn't use that water or that, you know, we shouldn't have access to it. But the issue is that there are so many humans, as well as other organisms and animals and plants that just need it naturally, that as soon as we start to drill in wells and start to use this water, we start to drain these aquifers pretty quickly. Um, and that can lead to some pretty serious problems when those wells, or those aquifers rather, get lower and lower. If you start to get your cell phone down to 5%, you know, five percent, you start to get nervous and you, you start to look for a charger. We should be doing the same thing with our aquifers because we're draining those really, really quickly. So not only is it just a physical problem, the lower this water gets, right, if the water level was here, then it's down here, then it's down here, we're going to drill this well not just down to here, but then we got to drill it down to here, and then even further down, and then even further down, right? So it's a physical problem, as well as eventually, this aquifer is not going to have any water left. So the more and more farming that we do is great, right? We can feed more people, but it also means that we're going to be running out of water in more places soon. And luckily, the United States has tons and tons of aquifers, but there are many countries and, and places around the United, around the world rather that don't have as many aquifers as we do. Even in the U.S., you know, the Southwest doesn't have the same water availability or the same aquifers um, that the middle of the U.S. or the East Coast does. Um, so it's something that we got to be cognizant of as we continue to farm and as the population continues to grow.